praise God, praise God. And let the people of God say, Amen, Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry. I bless God who has made it possible for you to join us on this program. Uh, today, we are going to be finishing off spiritual termites. Uh, remember, we've done part one, which was identifying spiritual termites. Then part two, the importance of identifying spiritual termites. So today, we are going to be uh, talking about how to deal with spiritual termites. Uh, but before we pray, I have a wonderful announcement to give you, uh, which is uh, the ministry, Eternal Food Ministry, now has our own uh, online-based TV channel. So to watch all our programs, all our videos, without other social medias uh, suggesting some horrible stuff for you or to you, uh, go to eternalfood.tv eternalfood.tv we have so many stuff beautiful bible based uh, encouraging videos bible teachings there for you I mean it's beautiful okay so before we go into today's program let us pray father we thank you dear sweet blessed Jesus we want to honor your holy name Thank you for loving us so. Thank you for giving yourself to us. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Father, speak to our hearts in this program. Make your way plain before us, O Lord, and grant us the spiritual understanding to know what the Spirit is saying to the church. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's quickly go back to, uh, like, summary of the first two uh, topics on spiritual termites. We discussed what spiritual termites are, and we defined them as negative demonic spirits manifesting in people's physical behaviors. Uh, they can appear harmless or commonplace, but they have devastating spiritual implications in and on people's lives. And of course, our case study for that was Sambalat and Tobiah. Uh, they appeared friendly to Nehemiah, but they were sinister minister uh, of uh, the devil to destroy Nehemiah and the building wall project that Nehemiah chaired. And we talked about the characteristics of natural termites as portrayed by Sambalat and Tobiah as a corrosive, covert, they form colony. They are constructive in a destructive way. They are calculated and they are catastrophic if they are unchecked. Then for the second part of that topic, we discussed uh, the, the importance of identifying spiritual termites. And it is very important so as to avoid that spiritual quality from being diluted, to avoid that journey from being derailed, to avoid that success from being delayed, to avoid that spiritual integrity and, and uh, reputation from being dented and to avoid divine promises from being denied. So today, let's go straight into the final, uh, the grand finale, if you will, of this spiritual termite topic. How to deal with spiritual termites. Having identified them, identified them, having known the importance of identifying them how do you deal with spiritual termites? Our case study is Nehemiah 
And our foundation text is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 13. And I read, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Please listen carefully. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world. It's talking about the cosmos now, okay? And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. How do you deal with spiritual talents? Number one, glaze them with your influence. Nehemiah's first response to Sambalat and Tobias' mockery was, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, we arise and build. You see, Nehemiah didn't respond their insult with another insult. No. He put the name of God right into his response to these two clowns in case they are not aware that there is a God in heaven and in case they have amnesia that Nehemiah and the people building they are God, are their God's servants. So he put the name of God right there. Let your godly attitude go over their ugly attitude. Don't wrestle in the mud with mud dwellers. No, you will lose if you wrestle with the mud dwellers. God wants spiritual termites to change and be saved too including your ex-wife, uh -huh, your ex-husband. God does not want anybody to go to hell. So let that be your primary focus as a child of God. Jesus tried on many occasions to reach the Pharisees, the Sadducees, by answering their questions. He preached to them directly and challenged them with the truth of the gospel. You see, let's go to the first uh, book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Then we jump to verse 3 and stop at 4. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1, then 3 to 4. I urge you, this is Apostle Paul admonishing his prodigy, Timothy. First of all, to pray for all people, all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants every, everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. You see, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad somebody might be that you think, oh my goodness, this is, he is off the, he is off the rockers. God wants everybody to be saved. So let your first response be glazing them with your godly influence. However, you are free to step away from spiritual termites who would not change. Some are the spirit of Pharaoh. They are stubborn pursuers, stubborn enemies. They are not going to change. Jesus left the Pharisees and Jerusalem to their recalcitrant ways. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wish like a mother hen to gather you. But you would not. See, your house is left to you desolate. Jesus had to cry over Jerusalem and walk away from Jerusalem. You are not better than Jesus. If the spiritual termites around you would not change, guess what? Pack your stuff, move out. Move away from them. Jesus did it, you can do it. 
Now, if the spiritual termite is coming from within you, you are still you, okay? You can't move away from you. This is what you do. Do not go into conversation with the voice in the head, okay? Or go into argument with the devil. If the devil is suggesting bad, negative, uh, unbiblical thoughts to you, don't argue with the devil. No. Recite Bible verses. Bible verses. It doesn't matter. The Lord is my shepherd. Just occupy yourself with a Bible verse or Bible verses and vocalize it. And keep saying that maybe under your breath, if you're at work, uh, if you're somewhere where you cannot speak out loud, re recite that Bible verse or Bible verses over and over again. Let that occupy your mind until the word of God becomes stronger and louder in your head and in your heart. And the contrary thought drowns out. The word of God is the best cleansing agent according to Ephesians 6, 17. So let the word of God cleanse you. Jesus said you are cleansed by the word which has spoken to you in John 15, 3. Uh, so let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26, Ephesians 5, 26. To sanctify her, the her that the Bible is talking about is the church, you and I, safe, sanctified, born-again children of God, cleansing us by the washing with water through the word. The word is the word of God. So let the word of God glaze the influence of the enemy in your thoughts. Amen. The influence of others about your Christianity will be based on your influence of others by your Christianity. The influence of others about your Christianity will be based on your influence of others by your Christianity. Moving on. Slay them with your silence. We have no better example than our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Pharisees would rather be contentious than attentive, guess what Jesus did? He ignored them. Their insinuations, innuendos, aggravations, and accusations, he ignored everything. We need to follow the Lord's example. You can prayerfully ignore spiritual termites around you, in your workplace, in your family, or in your neighborhood, by praying under your breath whenever they are around you. Pray, recite Bible verses, so you are able to ignore their wine, 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 okay? That's what Nehemiah did to Sambalat and Tobiah. After he first tried to influence them with godly uh, speech, and they became relentless, he ignored them, you see. If the termite attack was coming from the inside, can you see we are dealing with external and internal? Because spiritual termites can start from the inside or it can come from outside. So we don't want to be hypocrite to think, oh, we are perfect, that others are the spiritual termites. No, the devil brings stuff to our minds too. So we need to be aware of that. So, if the spiritual termite is coming from your inside, you can ignore the devil by deliberately, in the power of the Holy Spirit, disobey the devil. Act contrary to the demonic suggestions you are being offered. You can run, literally, or walk away, or change your geographical environment or positions. Whatever needs to be done to disobey the devil, do it. You know what? The Bible says, if you first bring a willing heart, this one is also acceptable. If God sees your heart that you are indeed wanting to disobey the devil, he will give you the grace. He will give you the grace. Okay? And God will see to it that you don't fall into that satanic mess. Okay, let's read the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Nehemiah 4, verse 3, we stop at 4. 
Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, it will break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. You see, at this point, Nehemiah did not try to convince them or preach to them. No, he prayed to God. He prayed to God. And you ought to do the same thing too. I ought to do the same thing too. After trying to glaze them with our influence and they refuse, they still insist on destroying us. It's time to slay them with our silence and just turn our prayer up to God. To live a Bible-centered life is to live a babbling, silenced life. Let me say that again. It's so beautiful. To live a Bible-centered life is to live a babbling, silenced life. Moving on. Pray them into deadness. Say what? Yeah. Pray them into deadness. If you are dealing with an internal spiritual termite, take off your kid gloves and put on your daily Bible studies, prayer and fasting gloves, okay? Christianity is a warfare. If anybody is telling you it's fun, it's simple, they are not talking about the same narrow road that Jesus said is difficult. If Jesus could say something was difficult, you better believe it, okay? Get, also get trusted prayer partners, okay? This is why you need people whose relationship with you is based on uh, the word of God praying together. If you have a relationship that is not based on that, you will be gossiping about other people, okay? So when you have prayer partners, that the, the, the foundation of your, of your friendship is to do Bible study and to pray together, guess what? There's no room for bad vibing. There's no room for gossiping. So get them involved and tell them what you are going through. Let them know specifically what you are praying against. Don't gloss it. Don't cover for the devil. Oh no, the devil is out to destroy you. So you, out, you get out to destroy the devil too. Tell them you are struggling with lust. You are struggling with jealousy. You are struggling with bad thoughts. T tell your prayer partners. You don't need more than one prayer partner. You, if you are really blessed, you may have two, you see, that God will give you. So then we target the prayer into that very specific area that you are asking God uh, for help. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much, according to the uh, book of James. Now, that is how to pray your internal spiritual termite into deadness. You fast and pray and put your head in the word of God. Okay? Now, if it's external, human spiritual termite, this is how to deal with them. When all other avenues are failed, you have tried to show the love of God, you have tried to reach them in preaching to them, you have tried to ignore their madness, they just keep coming at you. They just keep coming at you because they are possessed with the spirit of Pharaoh, they would not turn back. This is what you do. Because this enemy has exhausted all other godly avenues, then it's warfare prayer time. Yes. This is not a prayer of love and peace. Oh, no, 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 no. Because this enemy is bent on destroying you. You see? And they have refused to repent. Even when God has given them many chances, they will not stop at anything to destroy you. I'm telling you, uh, I was discussing um, a, a well-known uh, personality uh, recently, about two days ago, really. These people have been coming at this individual for like two years. Guess what? Eventually, they succeeded in destroying that individual last week. There were allegations and accusations that were never uh, uh, proven anywhere. 
just innuendos, nuances. If eventually, the employer had to let this individual go for something that was never substanti substantiated. That is the enemy for you. You see, they are out to destroy when they refuse to change. Now, your job is not to tell God to kill them in a car accident or in a plane crash. No, that is not your job. Your job is to go report them to God. God, look at X, Y, Z. Look at A, B, C. They are telling lies, spreading evil uh, stuff about me that I know nothing of. God, arise, O oh Lord. You are the righteous judge and begin to pray. Okay? Yours is to report their evil to God. You say, well, I, I thought God knew. Of course he did. But he wanted you to verbalize it. Report the case to heaven, you see, because by doing so, that will also change your perspective, okay? Ask God to frustrate the plans of the enemy. The method that God is going to employ to frustrate your enemies is totally up to God. It's not for you to dictate to God. You cannot even dictate to God, okay? If you don't know what warfare prayer means, Start reading the book of Psalms. If it takes you three months to read the whole of 150 chapters of the book of Psalms, so be it. By the time you finish, you will have gone to the school of prayer warfare. You will know what it means. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah 6.14 and see the warfare prayer that Nehemiah prayed. My God, remember Tobiah and Sambalat, according to these their works, and the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets, who would have made me afraid. You see, he, re he reported them to God. He even mentioned them by name, you see. But he's not saying, God, kill them with thunder, kill them in a car crash. No. He just reported them. You do the same, okay? Let's go. To 1 Samuel 26, verse 10, this is David's uh, prayer, uh, warfare prayer against King Saul when Saul wouldn't stop chasing him. David also said, As the Lord lives, surely the Lord will strike him, or his day will come that he dies, or he will go down into battle and perish. You know what? Somebody was telling, uh, I believe it's as a hell. He was telling uh, the brother of Joab, he was telling uh, David, let me strike Saul one time because Saul was sleeping and David and his men were there. They came upon him and Saul didn't know. And he was like, look, this is a great opportunity. Let me kill him right now. And David said, no, as sure as God lives. Is there we come that he will go by the way of natural death or God will strike him? Oh, he will go to battle and never return, you see. David didn't give God the options. He just said, no, all options are open to God. And guess what? Saul went to war and never came back, you see. So you report their evil to God. Now, some Christians erroneously believe that we are not to pray against our enemies. Really? Jesus said in the book of Luke, 22 verse 36 we are not going to read it says if you don't have sword sell your garments and buy swords why jesus was trying to let his disciples know that the battle ahead is going to be violent jesus said since the day of john the baptist the kingdom of god has suffered violence and the violent enter it, it, it by force. Listen, the enemy you have is fierce, is wicked, treacherous. He does not have mercy. Okay? So don't say, oh, we have to show love. When you have shown love and love is not loving them, listen, put on your armor, the armor of God, and begin to fire. 
with the bullet of prayer. Okay? For us, it means spiritual violence. The sword that Jesus was talking about to his disciples, for 21st century Christians, we are not to carry sword around. No, this is our sword, the word of God. We are to be equally violent in the spirit against the enemy of our souls and his agents. Who do not want us to be who God has called us to be, to do what God has called us to do? I'm telling you, God could have called some of you to be mothers of children, to bring up those children in the way of God. And there is somebody who is trying everything they can in their power to remove you from your house. Maybe by trying to lure your husband or by trying to destroy your family one way or the other. You don't show love to that person. They are st trying to stop you from doing what God has called you to do and from being whom God has called you to, to be. It's time for warfare prayer. You send them far away from your husband or from your family with bullets of prayer. Okay? If anyone is standing against you to be who God has called you to be and to, be, and to do what God has called you to do, that is not a prayer of peace and love. No, it's a prayer of violence. God, deal with them. To be spiritually violent against the enemy is to be spiritually violent against the enemy. To be spiritually violent against the enemy is to be spiritually violent against the enemy. So what have we done so far? How do you deal with spiritual torments? Glaze them with your influence, slay them with your silence, and pray them into deadness. They've got to die, okay? Now, how is your faith life? Huh? Is your Christianity dangerous to the devil and his demons? Does devil know your name? Do demons know you, your name, in hell? Do they? How violent are you against hell? How dangerous are you against the kingdom of the enemy? The, that demon said, Jesus I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? To the sons of Sceva. I pray you will not be one of those sons of Sceva that you will, you will be like a Paul. Now, if your Christianity is cake and coffee spirituality, Know that you are no match for the devil who is up against you or who you are up against. And do you know what the devil's motto is? Break and coughing spirituality. Break and coughing spirituality. The devil wants to break you and then bury you in a coffin. So don't carry cake and coffee spirituality. It's not going to match. No. You need to wake up and rise up to battle. Because that is the only way you can see your deliverance coming near. And that is the only way you can receive your deliverance. Now, if you're an unbeliever, oh my goodness, if you are an unbeliever, listen, there's bad news, but there's also good news for you. The bad news is the devil has been beating your head silly all this while. Yes, the devil has been destroying you all this time but praise god that you are watching this program now if you want to put an end to satanic molestations okay the best bet for you is not to say i'll do it tomorrow no right now right here as you are watching me you want to release your life to jesus christ is the only boss that the devil has. I'm telling you, Muhammad doesn't scare the devil. Oh no. Buddha doesn't scare the devil. But Jesus, he knows because the, Jesus is the only one who shed his sinless blood to destroy and break the backbone of the devil on Calvary. Okay? So, if you want to get out of, this, of, of the devil's pocket in which you are already as an unbeliever, Click the uh, link that will come up at the end of this program. It will take you to Want to Know Jesus page of our ministry. 
and there is in little bite we have explained what it means to be saved and as you do that get a bible start reading the word of god from the book of saint john gospel of john chapter one if you can do minimum of 15 minutes you can do more than that every day it's your daily spiritual medicine if you can do that you will do well and you begin to see how god teaches your hand to this battle of life and to this war of christianity all right you can defeat the devil too but you can only do that through jesus alone let us pray father thank you because you have destroyed he who had the power of death that is the devil and lord we appropriate your shed blood upon every area of our lives let the speakings of your blood rebuke the enemy for our sake in the name of jesus father we remember those who are going to want to know jesus page meet with them O oh lord and let them know that you are the conqueror who have conquered satan the world and the flesh thank you father lord in jesus name i'll be praying amen amen i will see you next week if jesus has not split the sky over <laughs>